John Rawls, a brilliant man who made ignorance and justice his calling cards. Born in Baltimore, Maryland in 1921 as the second of five sons in a wealthy family, John Rawls grew up in an environment filled with success and an emphasis on education. With his father a lawyer and his mother a political activist, Rawls maintained an early sense of the importance of education in his life. After receiving an education at Princeton University and completing a stint in the United States Army during World War II, Rawls began to teach at Cornell University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In 1962, Rawls began to teach at Harvard, where he stayed until the end of his teaching days. While at Harvard, Rawls made a profound impact on both academia and the world. In 1971, Rawls pub published his book, A Theory of Ju Justice, which quickly became one of the preeminent books on philosophy in the 20th. In it, he describes his theory of original position, which serves as an intriguing theory applicable to all time periods. This theory is used to determine fairness and justice in what Rawls determined was a fair method. The theory of original position judges fairness based upon if someone were to come into the world with no status and a blank white slate, would they agree to the current institutions of society? Rawls wrote in his theory of justice, original position is the appropriate initial status quo which ensures that the fundamental agreements reached in it are fair. In order to rid the analysis of these positions of bias, Rawls creates his idea of a veil of ignorance which says one must pretend as though they do not know how events and decisions will affect them as an individual. One conception of justice is more reasonable than another, or justifiable with respect to it, if rational persons in the initial situation would choose its principles over those of another for the role of justice," wrote Rawls. According to Rawls, the outcome of this process should be a defined set of bounds of justice to set a precedent, sort of like a Supreme Court ruling. Rawls' theory can be compared to some of the other theories in social contract explored in Intro to Political Theory. One can relate Rawls' theory to John Locke's social contract in that both of the scenarios, groups of men create society and the government would likely have the consent of the governor. On the other hand, Rawls would absolutely despise the theories of Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes' support of a monarchy would be repulsive to Rawls as he would not believe people would find a monarchy fair if given a clean slate. In his theory, Rawls directly cites Immanuel Kant. Kant and Rawls have similar ideas in that they believe in rights of man. However, they are different in that Rawls wants men to look from a view of ignorance, while Kant dislikes ignorance in man. Despite its seemingly perfect concept, the application of original position can be difficult. After all, it would be nearly impossible to judge institutions and make them fair once they have already been in place for centuries. If one chooses to look directly at the United States government, one would notice a quandary when seeing if it could be determined fair under Rawls' system. It is an absolute fact that the United States government was founded by men of extremely high social stature. One must wonder, did they create institutions based upon the good of everyone? Did they have a veil of ignorance, or did they, or did they have to create a government that would help only the privileged? One can immediately look to slavery as a clear example of the founders doing things for only their own benefit. However, let's see if we can arrive at some clear conclusions by examining institutions still in place today. One highly debated topic around election season is always the institution of the Electoral College used to elect the president, the highest office in the country. Would the Electoral College be fair and just under Rawls' theory of original position? Under a veil of ignorance, it can be assumed that each man would want his vote to be counted equally. In the Electoral College, each state has a different amount of electoral votes based on representation in Congress, making each vote count differently. Furthermore, the winner-take-all system used in 48 of the 50 states makes it so that if a state is already decidedly going to vote for one party, an individual vote would not matter. Therefore, based upon Rawls' original position, the Electoral College is not fair or just. As what person would want their vote to matter less than the next person's if given a blank slip? On the other hand, Rawls' theory would support the current system of checks and balances within the three branches of government. A man with a blank slate of knowledge would recognize that having one group of people or one person making final decisions would be detrimental to society. Therefore, the implementation of checks and balances would seem very fair as it allows laws to be created and decisions to be made that benefit the masses, which is what Rawls' theory is supposed to do. Another thing in the United States government Rawls would likely dislike is the current setup of the Supreme Court. Although Rawls supported the concept of judicial review in his lifetime, he would dislike the idea of life lifelong terms for justices as it would not necessarily benefit the greater good to the same people in power for such a long time. Ultimately, while deciding how to apply Rawls' 
theory in society is difficult, his principal beliefs are simple. If you remember one thing about John Rawls, remember that he was for the equal rights of man in order to create a greater good for society. As he wrote in Theory of Justice, each person is to have an equal right to the most extensive basic liberty compatible with a similar liberty for others.